Welcome to the Osborne Financial Group Podcast, hosted by Jared Osborne. Join us for expert insights on wealth management strategies, essential tips for securing your financial future, and in-depth discussions on life and health insurance options. Get practical advice for protecting your assets and loved ones, proven strategies for maximizing investments, and real-life examples to illustrate key concepts. Stay tuned for Q&A sessions with industry professionals and actionable steps to take control of your finances and insurance needs. Tune in now and empower your financial journey. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Osborne Financial Group Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Wolf. Joined by, as always, your host, Jarrett Osborne. Jarrett, good to see you. Jeremy. I am doing well. It is Friday, and I'm ready to get rocking on the topic of the day. So this is this is one of those topics where everybody's heard of it before, and it's it's Medicare. But I think most people, like the average common consumer out there, if they were actually asked to explain what it is, they'd be hard pressed to do so. So why don't you start off by giving everyone like an overview of Medicare? Um, and how it kind of benefits seniors, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So Medicare basically is a, a, a federal health insurance program that people age 65 or older um, are entitled to for the most part, as long as you've worked and you've worked and pretty much what you've been, part of your check goes towards Medicare. Okay. Um, and it could be before you turn 65 if you have certain disabilities, but essentially it's for individuals 65 and older um, it's a federally um, run program, okay, um, and it's consistent consists of two parts, okay. There's part A and part B, okay. When you turn 65, unless you're working for a, you know, a, a still working for a company and you have group coverage, um, you essentially can sign up for Medicare, okay. And part A is your hospital coverage, and part B is your outpatient or your doctor coverage. So it, it consists of two parts. Okay. So what is the annual enrollment, the annual enrollment period, AEP for Medicare? And why is it significant? Because I know yeah. that is that is just like the other the other uh, things we've talked about with open enrollment yep. uh, on the other markets, that's all kind of coming to a head right now. And this is the period where you got to get in or, or, or I think if you miss the window, you're kind of out of luck, right? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's certain rules, but basically what happens is after, before you, if when you turn 65, mm -hmm. um, there's three months before your birthday, the month of your birthday, and three months after your birthday, which you can sign up, you know, once you get Medicare, you enroll in Medicare, and you have the option to sign up for what's called either a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Supplement plan. Or you can just keep your, you know, Medicare, and, and I'll explain, you know, when we, a little bit about the differences. But basically, the annual election period or AEP, um, it's coming up. It starts October 15th and lasts until December 7th. And what that is, is that if it's not your that three months before your birthday, the month of your birthday, the month of your birthday, three months after, which is your which is your personal enrollment period if you're in Medicare. That that window, the October 15th through December 7th, is the window where you can make changes to your Medicare Advantage plan. OK, we'll discuss that. You can change your prescription drug plan if you have a separate one. And that's your window. If you do not do it within that window, unless you have what's called a special enrollment period, um, you're out of luck. If you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, and again, I'm going to discuss these things, um, and you want to switch, this is your time to do it. If you're in a prescription drug plan, a standalone prescription drug plan, and I'll discuss a little bit about that as well, this is your time to make that change, okay? If you, and like I said, unless there's extenuating circumstances like a qualifying event or a special room period, would you qualify it? And you have to, it's very specific, and you're outside of that window. Just like when we talked about, you know, the last podcast, you know, your, um, you know, enrollment period for individual health, you know, yeah. which, which goes from November first through January fifteenth. That's your enrollment period. And once you're outside that window, unless there's extenuating circumstances like a qualifying event. For a special enrollment period, you cannot enroll in, in in a different plan, and you're you're stuck with what you have. Okay, now there are certain times, you know, or special situations where you can make that switch, but you know, without getting too much into the weeds, and you know, for the half hour we're here, that's this is your window of time. Just like if you work for a group or you know, or a company, you have your enrollment period. It's usually you know the beginning of the year if you're in a, you know that cycle, 
Um, and once you're out of that and you don't enroll, you, you know, you can't make changes. Got it. And, and so like you work with individuals in this for Medicare enrollment in the same capacity you would on the other open exchanges, whereas like they're not paying you to help them with this, right? It comes out right. of the the plan, right? Correct. There's no, there's no Correct. drawback to working with. Cause I, like I always say, when it comes to this stuff, uh, for the average consumer, it's very, very confusing. And it's just so important to have a trusted professional that I say this all the time, right? That, that can really sit down with you and analyze your situation and determine what your needs are so that you can craft your plan. And, make it a recommendation. and, and I would say that th you're correct. So, so I do get paid what's called a commission. Um, it's, you don't get, the individual does not get billed for it. It comes out of the, you know, it's direct, I get it directly from the carrier. It doesn't matter. You go through me, it's the same pricing, whether you use an agent or you go direct to the company. Now I would tell you this, Jeremy, and all the people out there listening, and it, there's many reasons. One, this is even more confusing <laughs> than individual <laughs> health insurance. And, 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 and for a couple of reasons, one, typically, and I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, you know, discriminatory to age, but typically people 65 and older, you know, they're not, you know, they're, they, they don't, they probably don't have, you know, a lot of them aren't as technology, technology. Tech seven. Savvy. Yeah, of course. You know, they don't have, maybe they're not Old looking school. around. They don't have the, you know, you know, they're not, if they, if they met, and some of them are and very knowledgeable and some, but I would say that the people that I deal with for Medicare are just happy, happy that they have somebody not only to explain it to them, but to take them through the process. Because not only do you have to um, enroll in Medicare, original Medicare, that part A and B. OK, which is a process. You can go to your, your Social Security office. You can do it online and people don't understand. Oh, that's part A and B. Then you can say, OK, am I going to get what's called a Medicare supplement, which basically called Medigap policies, which fills in the gaps that original Medicare, that part A and B don't cut, doesn't cover. If you just have original Medicare, OK, and you don't get a, a supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan, I can explain those. You're basically on the hook for 20, pretty much for 20 percent of any bill you have. OK, and it does not cover prescriptions. Again, the, the me, original Medicare doesn't cover prescriptions. So if you're going to get original Medicare or a supplement and or a supplement or also called Medicap insurance fills in that gap that Medicare doesn't pay. You also have to get a standalone prescription drug plan, OK, which could be very confusing because every carrier, you know, for the most part, every major carrier has a what prescription drug plan. It's called Part D, like David. So you have original Medicare, which is part A and B, which is confusing. Then you have, you know, if you get a standalone prescription drug plan in conjunction with the original Medicare and a supplement, that's called part D. So, you know, you're already confusing people with the different letters. I don't know why they did that. I always say, like, why couldn't they just made it, you know, a little bit more, you know, <laughs> not, you know, user friendly in terms of all these different letters because it's so confused. So then, well, I, mean, I mean, it is a government program. So I mean, exactly. kind of explains it no comment, but yes. So <laughs> yes, it's run by the government. Um, so, so really, you know, you have to make, so one make getting part A and B original Medicare, then making a decision whether you want a supplement to fill in those gaps or you want a Medicare Advantage plan. Now, Medicare Advantage plan, just to kind of give a brief explanation of that, which is what you can sign up for and change during that, annual election period that October 15th okay. to December 7th is works similar to, you know, like a group health plan or you it's, it's, it's an individual insurance company. You have deductibles, co-pays, a lot of them include vision, dental. It include most of them include prescriptions, not all of them, but most of them okay. there's HMOs and PPOs. Okay. And so just trying to get through all of that, which carrier would be best for you? Because remember when you have, um, a Medicare Advantage plan, you know, it's just like having any other, you know, group health insurance, but you have to stay within the network for the most part. If you go out of network, unless you have a PPO, you know, it's going to cost you a lot more. If you have an HMO, you have to stay within the network. Some require referrals, some don't. Um, another thing, which is probably the most important and could be the most costly to seniors is the prescription. The prescription, usually the underlying Medicare Advantage plan is fine. It's Aetna, it's United, it's, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield, you know, it's a big company, you know your doctors take it or don't take it. When it comes to prescriptions, especially when you start getting 65 plus, typically that's a time when you're taking more prescriptions, not always, but most six seniors are taking yeah. more prescriptions. And every um, 
you know, carrier, Medicare Advantage carrier, or, or even a supplement, you know, Part D, that, that Part D like that, that standalone prescription drug plan, they all have different drug lists. And if you're on certain medications, um, especially, you know, the higher tiered medications that can cost you a lot more, you better make sure you're um, enrolling in the correct plan that fits your needs because the, the, the prescription drugs can get very, very costly. Now, recently, the SECURE Act, which, you know, was recently passed and they talk about it, you know, not getting political, but you hear about that cap on prescription drugs of $2,000 now. That's yeah, yeah I, I, sorry to cut you off. I, I've heard about that. You yep. said the SECURE plan and then the cap, the cap on the cap on prescription drugs. Let me see that a little further because I heard yeah. that and I had no idea what it was. So I'm interested. So there used to be all these different, um, uh, when you had a prescription drug plan or even Medicare Advance plan, there was the initial phase, then you had, you know, the the next phase and then a catastrophic phase, and it could get very costly. You used to have a cap on it several years ago, of, you know, eight, nine thousand dollars. Then a couple of years ago, it went down to, you know, you know like thir- three, thirty-five, four thousand, thirty-five hundred, four thousand. Now it's come down to two, which is is great. The issue with it, the issue with it, is, wow, that's amazing that they they lowered the cap on prescription drugs to two thousand. But what's going to happen this year? You're going to see an increase in premiums. premiums. Yeah, of course. right. Like, like somebody's got to pay for all this, right? Okay, always, exactly. And, and the insurance companies great, aren't, right? you know, they're not. Somebody's got to fit. Yeah, I mean, bill. so we're going to be paying for it, okay? <laughs> or the the insured. Yeah. So I, I, you know, the rates are starting to come out in all these plans now, and you're seeing 20, 30, 40, 50 percent increases in premiums. Yeah. You know, insurance companies. Yeah, that's wonderful that they work with the government to give you this. You know, cap on out of you're out of pocket, but at the end of the day, you know they just raise. It's like it's like anything. It's like inflation. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, they can. You know, they're not going to just be nice and say, "Hey, we're you know, they're going to raise the price on you." You know, so that's the way um, it works with insurance. Yes, you get this cap on something. But at the end of the day, you're still going to get an increase in in, in your premium. So, yeah, so essentially, in the long run, it's all being subsidized by the taxpayers awesome. and people that are us that That's are paying right. into these policies and everything. Right. On, on that note, so so we're all paying into this thing, and you, you turn sixty five, you're eligible for Medicare, but you're not. Maybe you're you're well off, and you're not. Even though you've been paying into it, you're in a situation where you have your private insurance. Uh, do you still tap into Medicare and then supplement with private oh, plans or do a lot of people just with what they have and they don't even worry about it? Cause good, it's good question. So if they have, first of all, the good thing about Medicare for the most part, okay. And I'll get into a little bit why it's going to be a lot less costly than your individual plan. Maybe not necessarily your group plan because your group plan may be subsidized by your employer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's just say your employer pays hundred percent of your, so obviously it's going to, cost less to be on a group plan because it's cost you nothing, even 75%. But when you go on Medicare, first of all, there's there's what's called, so you have Medicare as a part A and part B. Once you enroll in part A and B, there's what's called the part B premium. Okay, you have to pay for part B, everybody does. It's right now approximately $174 a month that goes to, that either comes out of your social security if you're taking it, if you're deferring your social security, they'll bill you, okay? Now, that 174 could be higher, that Part B premium, that Part B of original Medicare could be higher based on your income. So if you're a high income, if you're in a high income, okay, meaning two, three, four hundred thousand, and there's different brackets, it's called IRMA. It's an, an acronym, okay? And they look back two years, the government, and says, okay, well, in 2024, so they look back to 2022, your income in 2022, and they say, what was your income? And the government knows. So right when you apply for your 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 Medicare, they're going to say, well, you know, typically your Part D premium is one seventy four, but you know, looking back two years, your income was this, so it's going to be two or three hundred dollars. It caps out in the four four hundred four between four and five hundred dollars a month if you're a high income earner. Um, but typically, most of the time, it's between one seventy four to three hundred. You're making two three hundred. Okay. So that's one cost of it. So your Part B premium, you're not getting away around not paying it unless, you know, you're always going to pay your Part B premium. Then you make that decision on, okay, do I want a supplement or do I want a Medicare Advantage plan or do I want neither? Okay, now, a Medicare supplement is is going to be the, 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 the gold standard 
in terms of your coverage. And I say that because basically when you have a Medicare supplement, it fills in pretty much if you're getting the right plan, there's many different supplement plans and they all have letters, by the way. <laughs> They're all letters. They are, of course, but letters they are. the most popular one and the most um, comprehensive is plan G. Okay. Ooh. And, and every plan G, regardless of if you have United healthcare, United American, Florida, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, they all work the same. They may not all cost the same. Okay. Now there's a, because there is a premium for that now they're going to be there they're going to be within 10 15 percent of one another my you know for the most part um but basically um, uh, the plan g at age 65 non-smoker because that's the only thing that will affect your increase in prices if you're a smoker or non-smoker okay especially if you're, if you're doing it during your period when you turn 65 that three months before the month and the three months after there's no medical questions only if you're a smoker kind of like individual insurance okay okay so you get that plan G, which is the most popular or not. You can get a less rich for a little bit less. It's going to cost you in the 250 range in Florida, at least. OK, it could be a little bit, a lot less in up in Northeast. But let's just stick to Florida here. OK, it's going to be about two hundred and fifty dollars, give or take. OK, it could be two twenty five with some carriers. It could be two seventy five. Now, since they all work the same, really, you I, you really should just as long as it's an A rated carrier, a good carrier, you should really base it on price with a supplement because they all, when you have a supplement, so basically what a supplement is called Medigap insurance. It fills in the gaps in original Medi Medicare. Medigap? Medigap. Medigap, like that gap, gap insurance. Medicare, okay. Medigap, okay? Yeah. Or supplement or, you know, gap insurance, okay? It fills in those gaps that Medicare doesn't pay, that 20%, okay? And the plan G really covers almost everything except for your Part B deductible of $240. That's your out-of-pocket exposure for the, as long as it's covered by Medicare, your exposure is $240, that's it. So that's a pretty rich plan, you know? So to pay $250 for a, a plan where you have Medicare as your network, the, ga the gap is not your network. The gap fills in what Medicare doesn't pay. When you go to the doctor and you say, what insurance do you have? You say, I have Medicare with a gap policy. It doesn't matter if your carrier, if you have United Healthcare supplement, gap. The doesn't matter if your doctor accepts United. Do they accept Medicare? Are they in Medi so that's the largest network, Medicare 98.59 to accept Medicare. Except okay. yeah, well, I can imagine that would be the case again with the seniors, like they're you're looking to make it as easy as possible for them to find find care, right? Yeah, I mean, right. So that's so, to be available to them. Yeah. Right. So the supplement is going to cost you about, let's just say it's around 250. You have the part B premium of let's just say in normal world, it's a one, you know, that 174. Okay. Unless you're a high income earner. And then you have to get that prescription drug plan, that part D. So you see how confusing this can get for somebody who has no clue, right? It's, it's incredibly confusing. Right. And, and you so are then, like a wealth of knowledge with all this stuff. So this is right. why. So then you have that part D and really the part D you have to back end into it. The way you do it is they say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, what prescriptions do you take? Okay. Supplement, we're fine with. We're good to go with the supplement. No problem. We got you in one. There's really no questions with that. Do you smoke or not? So here's the price. They all work the same depending on the letter of the plan. OK, mm -hmm. Part D can get a little because you want to make sure you're getting the Part D plan and you you don't have to stay with the same carrier that you're getting the supplement with. You get United Supplement. You can certainly look at their Part D prescription drug plans, PDPs, or you can go to Aetna, Silver Scripts, or you can go to WellCare or you can go to Cigna or Umana. And you want to make sure that once we get the list of drugs with the dosages and the frequency, you're that whoever plan, you know, whichever one benefits you the best is probably the plan you're going to go on. Now, a part D plan will be the, the price. Obviously, it's, you know, based on the carrier, but also some plans based on your needs. You may need a richer plan, you know, because, you know, you your, your drugs are covered more favorably. You take I've, I've, I've had people email me a list of 15, 20 different drugs they're on. And I have literally there's a, something I go I can go to every carrier site or I have a software that I can plug in all these different drugs and it spits out which carrier which plan would be the which best will, will cover your drugs most beneficial. Yeah. 
beneficially. That's good and stuff. And so. So then we make that decision on the part D. There's a protocol to it. There's a what's called the scope of appointment. I have to send to the plan. I have to record all my conversations, by the way. You know, this is very compliance oriented. And it's, you know, it's the government and they can check on you and make sure that you're recording these calls, you know, because there's a lot of fraud, especially down in Florida. But, mm -hmm. you know, so that's how it's. Um, you know, a supplement works. Okay. You have to have a separate drug. Now, if you don't get a prescription drug plan during your enrollment period, when you turn SC5 and you go with that one, you can, you will get penalized every single month. You don't have, and it's a very small, uh, you know, penalty, but you will get a penalty if you don't have a prescription drug plan when you're supposed to sign up for one. Okay. Now, the second part is, Let's just say you don't want a supplement because it's going to cost you too much because you're looking at 250, 174. The prescription drug plan is going to cost you anywhere depending on the plan. It could be 15, 20 bucks a month. It could be 80, 90, 100 dollars a month depending on the plan. So let's just say somewhere in the middle, it's about 50, 60 bucks. So you're all in for about five, 600 bucks, not including the high income earners for pretty much the best coverage you'll ever have. I mean, really, you're out of pocket on the Medicare supplement for just not for just medical, not prescriptions is your part B. If you get the plan G is your part B deductible of $240. That's it. That's your out of pocket expense. Now your prescriptions, depending on it's going to work the same way as if you had a conventional plan, individual plan with Florida blue at, at, you know, when you're not 65, you know, or a group plan, it's going to work the same. You're going to have a copay for the drug. Maybe there's a deductible on, on the, on the prescription drug plan, sometimes they have deductibles, but really you're all in for five, 600 bucks for a plan that's like a platinum plan, you know? And so for somebody who's, if, unless they have group insurance, then they're not paying anything. If you're on the individual markets at 63, 64, and I know people are, they're paying without a subsidy. We went over that last time, tax credit, mm. you know, 1,800, 900, 1,200, 13, 14, $1,500 a month for individual yeah. health insurance. So, and you have deductibles and <laughs> high copays and, you know, so a lot, man. yeah. So to go for somebody like that, going to a plan like this is they're saving a lot of money and they're, they're getting, and the benefits are even greater, even if they're on a group plan and they're paying, let's just say 75% and they have a $5,000 deductible. Well, you kind of have to ask them, Hey, look, you may pay two or $300 more a month for a supplement, but you have no, you, your, your out of pocket exposure is minimal, you know? So does it make sense to spend a little bit more to have much better benefits? And that's a conversation you have. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Then let's just quickly go to Medicare Advantage. Let's just say the supplement's going to be a little bit too expensive or, and by the way, the supplement, remember your network is, is it's, it's national when you have a supplement, by the way, it's a not, you know, it's Medicare. So, you know, Medicare is accepted everywhere. And, you know, okay, then let's just say that's not going to work. It's too expensive. Even though the coverage is great, you want to get a Medicare Advantage plan. A Medicare Advantage plan, for the most part, is not going to cost you anything except for your part, except for the government, the Part B um, premium of that, you know, 174 a month, which is going to go, which goes up every year, by the way, a little bit for the most part. Right. Um, if you go decide to get a Medicare Advantage plan, then you want to be very, careful or you want to make sure this is where the insurance carrier is going to matter because medicare is not your um network at that point you're at the whim of the insurance company that you choose or the carrier so aetna united humana i mean blue cross blue shield you, you know they all have medicare advantage plans okay so you want to make sure that your doctors accept those plans you know, United, they're a United provider. They're, you know, they're a Vietnam provider. So that's one thing different than the supplement. As long as they take Medicare, supplement doesn't matter. It just fills in the gaps. Medicare, it works more like a conventional health insurance. You don't, you basically, what a Medicare Advantage plan is encompasses your Part A and B of Medicare. It, you don't have to get a Part D like David prescription because it's covered in the medic, it's covered in that. A lot of them cover vision, dental. There's a couple extras you can get some money. They give you toward, you know, they give you some benefits, maybe like towards gym membership. Silver sneakers, you know, is with some of the carriers. You may have heard of that. Um, they give you some money for over the counter. They they have um, 
you know, it covers preventative stuff that some of your just straight Medicare doesn't cover. Okay. So yes, it's a lot more. And, and you always say, well, why wouldn't somebody get that over a supplement? It makes sense. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, you know, some people just want to have the flexibility of having it the largest network and not want to be, you know, handcuffed to one carrier. Okay. Yeah, two, sense. two has deductibles, co-pays and all that stuff. Now the deductibles and co-pays are typically low, you know, if any like deductible may be 500 or even zero, but you do have co-pays 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on. And so there's out of pocket exposure and the prescriptions have, you know, a copay just like a part D. Um, it does include some dental and vision for the most part. Most plans do has, you know, um, some can include hearing. You can really curtail a, you know, a, a good plan around it. Now, the other thing is, okay, and this is, this is, you know, a lot of, you know, carriers may not want to hear this, but when you have a Medicare, so a Medicare Advantage plan, you know, just kind of back up, you're at the whim of the insurance company from not the smaller things they're going to cover. So let's just say, God forbid, you had cancer. And the doctor said, you know, the oncologist, whoever you're seeing said, you know, we want to go through this, um, you know, uh, plan of, 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 you know, to, you know, whether it be chemo or radiation, whatever, mm -hmm. or they want to put you on some sort of specific immunotherapy type medic, you know, prescription. Well, what's going to happen is they're going to go to the carrier. Let's just say you have carrier X. And the doctor's going to say, okay, Ms. Mrs. Jones has, you know, this cancer. We're going to put her on this treatment. The insurance company is going to say, well, okay, that sounds fine. Or they're going to say, well, before they do that treatment, we want them to do this treatment. And this happens more often than you think. Um, and so, you know, that, and it's, and I've seen it happen. Okay. And the reason why they do it, typically it's about this money. Okay. Yeah. They don't want you to get that expensive thing if you know. And so when you're dealing with cancer or anything major, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're doing what your doctor tells you to do. And you know, there's no if and us. Now, will that happen if you have a straight Medicare with a supplement? Straight Medicare is typically a lot more liberal or lenient with their underwriting. So can, you know, Medicare say, no, we don't want you to do that. Yes. But it doesn't happen nearly as often as if you're going through a carrier mm -hmm. and you know they want a specific protocol for your cancer or whatever condition you have and you know i'm not saying i don't know what the percentage is but i've seen it happen and so a lot of so you know or when you're near death or in hospice i hate to say it but you know they they basically gonna you know if you're if you have a very small child living it's it's not fun and a good conversation have, but Medicare basically is going to say, you know, we kind of are waiting for you to reach that point. Of, you know, they're not going to keep you alive, you know, um, whether you want to or not, you know, um, mm -hmm. they just don't, you know, it's a costing to them. They look at percentages and they look at statistics. And so will Medicare do that? You know, I, like I said, they're a lot more lenient and, and liberal when it comes to these things than going to a straight and, and it's, you know, I hate to, talk about it but yes so for the little things for minor things for you know minor surgeries even like you know hip surgery stuff like that medicare advanced plans are awesome okay and i'm not trying to i do i do them all okay and for certain people they're great but you know it, it comes to a time when you have a very specific or a very serious situation and you're fighting with the insurance company to get the care that you're being told to get that's when it becomes an issue with some medic, with a lot of times with Medicare Advantage plans. And so that's, so those are your choices. Your three choices are just keep straight Medicare, part A and B, deal with the 20%, okay? Uh, two, get keep your Medicare and add a supplement to it and a part D drug plan, okay? Um, or three, get a Medicare Advantage plan. Now we talk about that annual election period, the AEP, which is coming up October 15th. That really is more for a Medicare Advantage plan and your prescription drug plans to make that switch. When you're talking about a supplement during your initial, when you turn 65 or 66, whatever, um, or you've dropped your group coverage and you you want to, you know, you have what's called your your personal enrollment period, guaranteed issue. 
You have that three months before your birthday, the month of your birthday, three months after. Supplement you can get, no problem. After that period, unless you know, unless there's extenuating circumstances, which I'm not going to get into. If you want to, if you go, jump into a Medicare Advantage plan initially, and then you want to go to a supplement three years from now, okay, it becomes medically underwritten. A supplement. If you, okay. yeah, you can switch between Medicare Advantage plans during this time all you want. Part D, the same, but supplements work differently. Supplements, you have to not outside of your personal enrollment period, that 65 period. If you in two or three years, you want to switch, you know, you, you know, you switch, you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you want to go to a supplement, then, like I said, unless there's extenuating circumstances, which there are some, um, you know, rules, but for the most part, you have to qualify for a supplement. Now, it's not like you can get blood work, they, they ask you very broad, have you had you know, renal failure, do you, have you been, you know, had heart, you know, heart disease? I mean, they're, you know, it's not like, have you had, you know, a cold? Have you had a, a knee surgery? It's not like that. Yeah. It's really just stuff, but it is medically underwritten. And so you, you have to, that initial point when you make that decision, it's very important, you know, because if you go into a Medicare Advantage plan, unless you want to get out to go into a supplement because it's your first time in a Medicare Advantage plan, you really, you know, after, that initial period for you, you and you want to switch your Medicare supplement from Medicare Advantage plan, it has to be underwritten. Okay. And so yeah. that's, you know, something that to consider during this this time. Yeah, man. A lot, lot. Yeah. I know it's a lot. Yeah. I feel so like we went by Jeremy, you know, we have this and, you know, if anybody needs um, you yeah. know, guidance because it is a lot and it's really, it's very confusing. Even, you know, it's even more confusing and, you know, at 65, you're, you're typically going to need your health insurance more. So I would say it's more pressing for, you know, people in this age group to make sure that they have the correct coverage, not only to make sure it covers what they need and benefits them, you know, the best, but too, from a cost standpoint, you know, um, yeah. you know, because it is a consideration. Yeah, man. So, so I feel like we, we covered yeah. a whole lot of information. We, <laughs> went down, we went down a deep dive, a deep rabbit, rabbit hole, clearly, you have many, many, many years of experience. So for anybody out there where they have any questions, if anything we discussed through this conversation resonates with you, reach out to Jared anytime. Obviously, you can see he's a wealth of knowledge. He's here to help in any way he can. Um, if you like the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. There'll be a link in the description to how you could do that. Um, and again, it, it doesn't hurt to ask, to reach out, to ask questions, because as you can see, this stuff is wildly confusing and it pays to work with a trusted professional. So on that note, thanks everyone for tuning in and we will catch you all next time on the next episode of the Osborne Financial Group podcast. Thanks everybody. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Osborne Financial Group podcast. For more financial tips and personal advice, visit us at www.osbornefinancial.com. That's www.osbornfinancial.com. Or give us a call at 954-963-3300. Take charge of your financial future today.